It's great to be here this morning. Um, growing up in the state of Ohio, uh, I was always associated with the Ohio State-Michigan game, always watched the Notre Dame-Michigan game. And uh, when I was a little kid, I always watched the Bowling Green Toledo game. I can uh, remember as a little kid watching that game. Um, many of the people on our staff feel the same way. It's a great rivalry. I know our kids are excited. I know our staff is excited. And uh, I'm honored to uh, be a part of this game. I think it's a great uh, college rivalry. Uh, it's 25 minutes up the road. Um, we recruit the same kids. And uh, it's going to be a very exciting uh, rivalry uh, um, over uh, the next uh, few years that I'm here. A lot of coaches and players will say that in the rivalry week, it's just another game. You haven't really taken that approach at all. You have said that this is important to you. Why is that the case? It's a rivalry game. Um, every single rivalry game that I've been a part of, I've been a part of some great traditions out there. The Florida-Georgia game, the Michigan-Ohio State game, the Auburn-Alabama game, the Virginia-Virginia Tech game, the Boston College-Syracuse game. I mean, at all those places, you never took the rivalry game the same way. It's different. Uh, it's special. It's special on both sides. Uh, Generally speaking, both teams normally in really good rivalries respect each other. Uh, they play hard against each other. It's normally a, one of the cleanest football games um, whenever you're in real rivalries. And uh, it's exciting. I mean, my goodness gracious, this game's been being played for a long time now. And uh, having the ability to be part of such a cool game is exciting. And uh, I know our staff feels that way. Obviously, our players do. And, um, I feel honored to be a part of it. Obviously, they've they've dominated this rivalry. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to put it. Um, how do you guys get this thing flipped around? Is it a mentality? Is it recruiting? How do you guys get this thing flipped around? Well, you got to win it. You got to find a way to to win one of those games. I've been on both sides of uh, big time rivalries that it's been uh, lopsided one way or the other, and. You got to find a way to, to win one. You got to you got to break through, and then obviously through great recruiting, great development, consistency. Um, hopefully, you can get on track to either be on the other side of the lopsided rivalry, or it's uh, all those really really good rivalries is win two, win one, back and forth. They're so exciting, they're so fun, and uh, hopefully we can get it back uh, to those standards where it is an exciting back and forth rivalry because that's good for college football. As a first-year head coach, how do you explain this game to other first-year players or freshmen who haven't been a part of it yet? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think you fall back on your past experiences of being a part of such really, really big-time rivalries. You explain to them um, what, a, what a game like this means. Um, and you also teach them to respect the rivalry. I mean, my goodness gracious, that's what this game's all about is you want to – you want to go out and you want to beat your rival. You want to do this. You want to do that. But you also have to respect them because they're trying to do the same thing. Conversely, for the guys on the other end of the spectrum, the seniors who have not had a chance to beat Toledo yet, what is there just a sense of finality when you go into this game and you haven't gotten the win that you want? I'm sorry. Ask that one more time, Nick. There's a sense of finality when you're at your last chance to beat them. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've. Uh, I watched Chad Henney experience that at uh, Michigan. Um, uh, I watched John Cooper go through that at Ohio State. You know, the, um, you want to try to find a way to, to win your rivalry, especially when it's your last opportunity to do it. So um, that's the cool things about rivalries is uh, once you hit that fourth and fifth year and it's your last go around, uh, you respect it, you understand it. Um, and you get pretty fired up to go play in this game. And I know their kids are doing the same thing, which is uh, that's why it's a rivalry. It's awesome. I think the old cliche is that you can throw records out the, the window in a game like this. Do you take that approach um, when, when you go into a game as obviously a heavy underdog? I've, uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen that game or the rivalry games uh, where a particular school that I was at uh, would have a very average year and that other particular school would be number one, number two in the country and, and find a way to win. And uh, I've been on the other side where you're the heavy favorite and you walk in and the next thing you know you're, you're, get, you're behind really quick. So um, yeah, I think in, in any big rivalry game, uh, I think all the records are always thrown out the window because you never know what's going to happen. The motions are different. Uh, people are playing as hard as they possibly can. They're generally as locked in as they possibly can be. And uh, 
So to answer your question, if we were favorites or underdogs, you better be locked and loaded and you better be locked into exactly what you're doing and how you want to do business because uh, it is a rivalry. They're different. They're, they're special and weird things happen in rivalry games, which is why people watch them. Uh, we'll uh, decide that at the end of the week. When you're in practice this week, how are you going to differentiate who you want to start with? In terms of rep, well, we only have two on scholarship, so it's it's not hard to rep them. You follow me? Now, if you had three and four and all that, it's difficult, you know, of how you're going to distribute the reps. So, unfortunately and fortunately, we're not in a situation where rep count is an issue. Obviously, this rivalry has kind of been on your guys' mind since you got here during camp. And you guys had the song playing for certain drills during practice as well. So what do you feel the energy is like for you guys this week? Do you, is there a different kind of energy around? Yeah, it's, it should be different. It's, it's different for them. It's different for us. That's the way you know great rivalries are. You, you approach them. Um, obviously, we always approach it business-like in terms of it is just another game. But the fact of the matter is it's not. I mean, the emotions are high. Uh, it's, a, it's a school that's 25 minutes either north or south, matters which place you're at. And uh, we all recruit the same guys. It's, they both have Bowling Green and Toledo, both have ridiculous traditions. So uh, yeah, it's different. It's different for them, it's different for us, and it should be. What do you see out of Toledo this year? I think uh, they've. Three things whenever you, you watch them on tape. Number one, uh, there's been consistency in that program for a long time. Uh, they've had consistency, um, and you can see it. Uh, they're, uh, they've got a system on all three phases of the ball. They've done a great job recruiting, in my opinion. Uh, I think uh, their athletes are arguably one or two. I mean, however you want to skin it uh, in the Mid-American Conference. Um, and three, I think they've developed their guys quite well. and. Uh, all of the things that we want to do here. We want to have consistency here. We want to be able to recruit really well. And we want to develop our players. And that you can tell that, that that program has been put together for quite some time because of all the three things. You can see, you can taste it, you can feel on tape. After Saturday's game, you felt like you guys played a better game than you did at Kent State, but you weren't sure you wanted to look at the film. After looking at the film, do you feel better going into this Saturday now? Um, Offensively, I thought uh, that uh, we, we ran the football okay, uh, still not consistent. Uh, we're still missing the ability to have those explosion plays that you'll want. Uh, defensively, I thought uh, the front seven played much better than we did in Kent State. The back end struggled. Uh, we did not play well in the back end. Our situational football on third down on offense was much, much improved. We were able to stay on the field longer. Uh, defensively, we were not good in third down, and we weren't good in the red area. So uh, there were some positives, there were some negatives, and uh, um, you know, walking into that defense, that offense, that special teams with 60 some odd guys, guys on scholarship, and compared to their 85 and their other 35, 40 guys that are on the sidelines over there, you know, we competed as hard as we possibly can. We were able to come out with some positives. Is it? Anything of the standards and expectations that we want right now? No, of course not. We all know that. But uh, we needed to uh, find some positives and obviously work on the negatives uh, that we saw on the tape. Maybe the best thing about Toledo offensively is the balance. How mm -hmm. do you guys disrupt that? I love it. You know, I mean, uh, that's awesome. I mean, uh, that's the part that uh, I think makes them great on offense is that they are balanced and that's what we want to be. I, mean, uh, I think they're. I want to say ninth in rushing or tenth in rushing, something of that na nature in, in the nation. Uh, they have the ability to throw the football through. Uh, they've got some really good route concepts some play action, and obviously their RPO world is uh, outstanding. And uh, defensively, they're athletic. Uh, they're disruptive in the back end. I think the uh, young freshman, number 13, I think he can play anywhere. I think he's different. And. Uh, just like I said, I think they've done a really good job recruiting and developing their players. How do you approach a quarterback like Guadani who can, when plays break down, he can, he can run and things like that? How do you guys approach that defensively? Well, you've got to corral them. You know, obviously, if you can try to get them into one phase of their game, that helps with the balance issue. You know, if you could somehow find a way to stop the run, that helps 
uh, dealing with a quarterback that can break the pocket and be able to contain him. So he's really good. He's a senior. I think he's tough. Uh, he's been banged up before, and he has a, the ability to come back and play injured. Um, he's a tough guy. I, I respect him, and uh, any time that a quarterback's tough and resilient like he is, you got to give him much respect. Rookie, you went back and watched what Grant did on Saturday. Um, what jumped out at you, and, and were there things that you liked that, that you hadn't seen from him yet? Um, there was two times in the throw game that uh, he anticipated really, really well. And uh, that's his issue at times, is the anticipation to be able to see it before it happens. And um, there was time, there was two t instances that I thought it was outstanding. There was a couple times that he was very late, which um, negated us from catching and running, creating yak yards. So there was some improvement with him. He's got a lot of things to continue to work on. I thought he did a great job with leadership uh, in the huddle. I thought he tried to drive the team. Um, Mistake-wise, you know, there's some things in the passing game that you would really want to see improved on, and he's working on them really hard.